Let's suggest the start yes, to give the background for our. Forget the word. Think about how it could be. A new mindset has arrived, where to share has become our greatest power. It is this energy that guides us, will enlighten us. The meaning and purpose of the plane. Burn inside. The human to human model. United and inspiring leaders globally. To build together with meaningfulness and joy. Opening new possibilities for people. Anticipating disruption. Rethinking society. Fully reach their potential because the teacher is today. Join us. To be sustainable plus 112. I think right now is clearly the way to act. Lack of clean energy will affect. Okay. 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 So we moved from greed-based civilization to human-value-based civilization. Making money is a happiness. Making other people happy is a super happiness. Wondering about your future? So bring your DNA to us today. So this was our vision. And now something about difficult moments. When you are a dreamer, when you are a visionary, of course you have your vision, but there are moments that sometimes maybe you stop believing in this vision, especially in the moments of uh, some problems or failure. So could you tell me, and could you tell also to thousands of people who maybe will be motivated by your answer, what keeps you fighting for your vision? What helps you to reach your dream? Well, I mean, I, I think I'm kind of constitutionally just geared to, to just keep going. I don't know. Um, it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it certainly, it, there are times when you know, things don't go well, and then uh, that's quite dispiriting, for sure. Um, and so then it's, it's difficult to proceed with the same level of enthusiasm. Um, but um, but I do think, like I do think, the things that we're doing are, are you know, pretty important to the future. Um, and if we don't succeed, then you know, there's, well, there's, there's not, it's not clear what other things would succeed. Um, and if, if we don't succeed, then we'll be certainly pointed to as a reason why people shouldn't even try for these things. So uh, I think it's important that we do whatever is necessary to keep going. So thank you, and I wish you that your next Thursday is very successful. Thanks. Thank you so much. I think that uh, this was a very important message, uh, especially right now, yes? Because uh, we are locked in our apartments, houses around the world. Millions of people, uh, they are thinking about their future. They are feeling disasperated. It also concerns uh, business people, yes, around the world. And I think that uh, in such special moment, uh, working together and uh, creating together this positive energy is so important. And uh, I always like to come to India because uh, Indian people, they are really spiritual, yes? And uh, when you come to India, you can feel the energy. And you can feel that if the energy is positive, the miracles can happen.
So, so now one of the miracles is, is happening, yes? Even if we are, let's say, uh, in different corners of the world, but we are united together. And I would like to uh, ask you today, uh, our honorary chair, uh, Mr. Popley, and uh, also all the guests, international guests, like uh, chairman of the Global Solar Council, Gianni Chianetta, like uh, chair for India, honorary chair uh, Pranav Mehta, uh, chair for India, Hitesh Doshi, uh, Rashi Gupta, a person who is helping uh, clean tech business club around the world and other distinguished guests to think together how we can overcome this uh, COVID-19 situation in India. And I think even more important, what will be the future after this COVID? Yes, because uh, one day COVID-19 will finish. Yes. And I believe that this can even make us stronger and this can even help us to accelerate even quicker, quicker the transformation of our world. And uh, paradoxically, maybe it will be positive result at the end of the day also for India. So I would like to give uh, first uh, the floor to... Uh, um, Thomas, before that, could we please have uh, Vaishali Sina uh, upgraded to the panelists, please? Uh, Vaishali, uh, could you, could you uh, raise your hand? Okay. Yeah, she has done that. Right. Oh, there she is. Yeah. So I, I, I would suggest uh, to give a, a short welcome to Mr. Popley and also to the chairman of the Global Solar Council, Gianni Canetta. And then I give a floor to a co-moderator, uh, our friend, uh, Did Rush. Super, thank, thank you so much. So should, should we start, Thomas? Yes, yes. but yeah. first with a uh, short welcome by uh, Mr. Popley and also by Gianni Chianetta from the Global Solar Council. Yes, yes, super. So uh, I take, I take uh, permission of uh, Mr. K.S. Popley, who is the honorary chair, to start the session. So, sir, uh, because this is the brain. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So this, sir, is, please, this is the brain. Thank you, sir. So since this is a brainstorming session, uh, if, if you permit, we all will speak for four, four minutes initially. And in the end, we'll all get 30 seconds to uh, give our, uh, you know, concluding remarks. So Perfect. then uh, there are, there are two, uh, sir, there are two major challenges the world is facing. Number one is climate change. And second is energy poverty. And the answer for these climate change and energy poverty lies in this panel. The answer is India, number one, and answer is clean tech, answer is renewable energy. So uh, Sri K.S. Popli has, is an advisor to International Solar Alliance. He is also former CMD of IRIDA. But more than that, he is the funding Maharaja of India. The maximum funding, if any institution has done, it has been done by Honorable Sri K.S. Popli ji. He never let the renewable energy sector down and around 40,000 crore rupees were disbursed for renewable energy sector in his, in his tenure. So I request uh, uh, Shri K.S. Popli ji, as a chairman, please uh, uh, share your thoughts, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raj. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Pranav Mehta ji and Mr. Doshi, Mr. Reji, Mr. Amit Jain, Vaishali ji, Rashi Gupta, Vipin Gupta ji. I am really honored. Uh, <clears throat> See, today, the world is facing maybe two big challenges. One is COVID, which is a short-term challenge, uh, out of which we might come out. But it is also leaving a learning for us, for all of us. We have seen how much improvement we have seen in three weeks' time, or in, in a month's time, in our environment, in air quality. We are seeing birds around. We are seeing animals around. And we are, we are, in fact, in a way, giving back the territory that belong to them. And I think once the economy rebounds, quite a few things people will still try to retain. And will their, their interest on environment, you will get more support from people going forward, I am very sure. And the only alternative today for that is renewable energy. And there, our role comes in. We have already traversed a very, very difficult path already. 
when the tariffs were very high, the energy was expensive. Today, when the prices have fallen, the renewable energy has become viable, affordable, sustainable. The only issue that remains is integration maybe. And we, we expect that in next 10 years, five years, the battery prices will come down and it will be possible to integrate even 100% renewable, maybe another 20 years down the line. Uh, so that, see, what is required is if we want to retain global warming to below 2%, we have to cut our emissions by 70% by 2050. And if we have to retain it below 1.5%, which was the original target, then we have to commit, we have to reduce our emissions 100% from today on by 2050. Now, balance 30% of emission reduction would be a very, very tough challenge where we are. But considering what your question was, where we will see ourselves in 2030, yes, today, maybe the globe is at 15, 20% of renewable energy penetration. We should be at 30%. The target was probably 36%. We might be somewhere there, somewhere between 30 to 36%. What uh, further see the access to energy is another challenge which you talked about, 600 million people globally do not have access to energy and the target is to make them energy available by 2030. On this, I would say ISA is doing a great role, multilateral development agencies are doing great work, World Bank is here, ADB is doing, all these agencies are trying to ensure that the world gets access to energy, everybody achieves that by 2030. It will be better for our health, will create more jobs, effective route to reduce carbon emissions. So uh, I would say RE is not an option, but it has become a necessity. Sooner we understand and make the world better, it will be good for our posterity. Technology has uh, significantly reduced the costs uh, and these, these are likely to continue declining further. So uh, viability in any stage will not be a challenge for renewable energy. Globally, uh, through ISA, we are doing a program for solarization of diesel pump sets. So that is a step further. We have a new world organization which is working, especially focusing on Africa. And I, I am sure large penetration in renewable energy should happen in Africa, Latin America, and small island countries because the biggest urbanization that we are going to see is in Africa. And there, the question of energy poverty is going to be addressed through renewable energy. We should also see, uh, of course, perceptible improvement in environment going forward. And in India, if you look forward in next 10 years, we can think of making it a manufacturing hub because the sentiments are shifting. We have a huge domestic market and we know that renewable is going to penetrate further. So that is where I would leave my thoughts for everybody to share further. Thank you. We have, we have a huge... immense opportunity to hold Solar World Congress. It is an opportunity for India to gain more investment, to interact and research and a lot of other things will happen uh, together. Uh, ISA has played a very, very important role to, uh, you know, uh, take the movement forward. So one of the, I, uh, Mr. Gyani is there with us. And uh, when uh, the treaty was made, one of the important uh, lines in the treaty is that 1000 billion US dollars have to be spent between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn for solar application. That is a massive, massive target till 2030. So uh, I would like uh, Mr. Gyani, who is the chairperson of the Global Solar Council, and he's also program director of International Solar Alliance and is well versed with the entire global scenario. So to share his thoughts as to uh, how these uh, things will be achieved and till 2030, what are his thoughts, how the uh, renewable energy sector will grow and develop. Uh, uh, Mr. Gyani. And uh, I love uh, to be in a discussion about India, and I like uh, to recover to refer to the 
last wording of Thomas that uh, uh, really the best way to overcome to this crisis or to any crisis is really to have a strong spirituality. Uh, anyway, I was uh, really watching a, a video, a scientific video about how spirituality can really um, make uh, have a physical effect on our strengths uh, and uh, and the willingness and results in in our targets. So so in India, I agree with you, Thomas is a great place to to really link with this topic of spirituality. And uh, having said this, and I like to recap. Uh, um, a, a word that was a sentence was said yesterday in the Global Solar Cancer webinar uh, that uh, it was a sentence was a, like a, a light motif of the, the debate uh, to do not leave any, anyone behind is very important because we have understood that uh, uh, all everything we do affect uh, everybody in the world and nowadays we understand more than than before. So it's very important that, of course, uh, uh, we, um, we take, care of, uh, take care about poverty and uh, we, of course, uh, um, uh, look uh, at the world at, um, the world at, at wall. And it's very important, of course, uh, uh, you mentioned the, the Paris Agreement and uh, because uh, uh, we have experimented now that uh, maybe thanks to, to the stops of the activities, uh, the, there was a, um, a reduction of uh, CO2, uh, unbelievable reduction, very fast. And nobody was expecting that uh, this would be very fast. But uh, um, this reduction, uh, as, uh, um, in the same way, we might have the same fast uh, return to the fast uh, um, CO2 emission if we come back uh, to the the to the. Uh, the, the normal activity as was before, if we operate as was before. So the global warming is not, has not disappeared uh, with the coronavirus. We'll come back anyway, and it's still a problem. And uh, uh, I'd like to remark uh, anyway some uh, uh, number given by the Director uh, General of uh, IRENA yesterday in the G GSC work, um, webinar, Mr. La Camera, that uh, if uh, we really want to maintain uh, uh, anyway the uh, global uh, the, the temperature at an increase of two percent, uh, we need uh, to um, have a reduction of at least seventy percent of the emission by 2050. Is huge, and if uh, we want to re reduce to 1.5 percent, which is uh, the recommended uh, recommended e maximum increase by the scientists to re reduce the limits, we should reduce one uh, the energy emission of 100%. Uh, it's huge, it's huge, it's a big effort that only with a real spiritual connection between us, we can achieve this goal. And of course, uh, Clean, Tech, uh, Clean Tech Business Club is really very important. And I told Thomas, I believe in this project so much because uh, first, we are people. Behind any company, there are people. And we need to convince the leader of, uh, of the need of change. We need to have everybody in, in, in the same page. So uh, we need to convince politicians, as was said yesterday, uh, to put solar, to put renewable, to put clean tech at the heart of the policies. Uh, everywhere in the world, at the heart of policies nowadays, the, the clean tech, the, the sustainability need to be in the head of the policies. And uh, was said yesterday also, finance is there. It's not a problem of finance. The finance is there. Anyway, even uh, there was a stop of, uh, of, um, of investment even, anyway, during 2020 or uh, a big reduction. And, uh, and, but the finance is still there. So it's not a matter of finance. So, so we need, to, of course, to work in a different way to, we need to uh, accelerate um, authorization process. We need to, uh, of course, simplify all the procedures, all the bureaucracy, standardize as much as possible. And we need to uh, profit of this time of, uh, of a stop uh, to work in a digital way uh, to prepare a fast, fast restart. Because if you don't do nothing, uh, digitalization, Nowadays, we will change the world. 
Uh, and uh, we are starting now. This is uh, e-convention is an example where we can share our ideas. We can really work now immediately to prepare a faster restart. So see, this is a critical moment where we need to, and the DZ convention is a very good, um, is a very good uh, um, uh, platform to really brainstorming how we can restart faster. India is a, a very important country. Uh, India has a great opportunity, uh, is a big, has a big population, has a, a, a big market, internal market, and uh, uh, anyway, I know that uh, from the number I seen yesterday from Avia, 80% of uh, uh, the components is coming from China. But maybe India, with such a huge market, should also self-produce a lot of components anyway, and to have a, a very big role. Because having an internal, such a big market, is an opportunity and uh, and to and uh, of course to them to be stronger outside so first you, you you can be stronger inside and then you can be also even stronger outside so education is also a very important challenges yesterday and uh, russia made a great uh, uh, panel uh, made a great panel on uh, on uh, women in power um, we need the talent we need different talent that women can add give uh, uh, be a, a great added value in, in talents, but we need to invest a lot in education. Women need to be have the same access to education to be candidate to leader position as well. So, so we need to start from education. So, is a is a very important uh, point as um, as like. So, this is my 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 input, and uh, uh, absolutely we need to restart in a. Um, uh, really, I'm sorry for all the people that uh, are, have lost life or people that will lose life. Um, the, the, there is a, a big the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, is not ended. Uh, we have a big uh, fear, a big threat of for Africa. We are not going to. We don't know what is going to happen in Africa. We need to think now to all the. Uh, power um, to all the population, uh, more uh, power population, because uh, uh, the disaster that can happen in Africa after what happened in China and Europe can really affect us, and we need to be all together. To do not leave anyone behind. This is my. I'd like to conclude my my intervention with this word. I think it's very very important. Sorry, I, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear. Raj, you are on mute. Please okay. unmute yourself. Uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant, Gyani. Mr. Gyani, brilliant. You were spot on that alternative manufacturing hubs have to be created for the world. Maybe 40 gigawatts manufacturing facilities have to be created, created alternatively so that the industry has all the requirements which are required for making this energy revolution or uh, uh, renewable energy to take forward. So I will introduce the next uh, speaker. He's the chair, uh, uh, Sri Hitesh Doshiji. He's chairman of the Bari Group, which is the largest manufacturing facility of panels in India. And he is also a CBC co-chair for Asia and chair for uh, uh, India. He is the president of Model Module Manufacturing uh, Association. So uh, Hitesh ji, uh, my, I would like you to throw some light that what a country needs to do for making India a global hub for manufacturing? What steps uh, we need to take as India so that India becomes in maybe five years a global manufacturing hub and uh, you know other views which you want to share about that. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Thomas and entire team for arranging such a great uh, seminar. And I think so this is what you are also showing the post-COVID, how we'll have the conferences and how we'll interact with each other. Uh, from Indian side, I see yourself and Dr. Ashi Gupta are doing a great work in this. And congratulations and thank you very much to both of you. Uh, manufacturing uh, in India, I think that's, that's a very big challenge we have in this country. Today, a lot of things we are dependent on only one country and that's a high risk of uh, energy security to india also i personally see a huge opportunity here but for that 
we have the to grow the solar power before the manufacturing. I would like to tell you that hopefully some knows this much better. The biggest challenge personally I see is the distribution network and the system we have, and a very large reform in my opinion first that is required there. Today till we don't have the money in the distribution companies. The estimates we are seeing now during the COVID that the losses will be over a fifty thousand crore, the collection dues will be more than a forty thousand crore. So what it means? It is clear that the distribution companies are going to be a further in a problem. The demands are less, and the mostly the people who are paying the high price they are not consuming the power for last almost one month, and we don't know how much further. So personally, I see that to to see the India on you know, a size and all that. The first thing we need to work. Uh, I will call it. A big structural reform is required on the distribution, and where the losses converts into the profits, and a lot of hurdles today we have, and even at some place, even if you want to put a 10 kilowatt on their roof, the time and process he has to go through in India. Okay, we we can do it, and we are doing it, but the national energy we are wasting in that it is I think too much. So first thing, in my opinion, uh, that is what the to bring in India before we get the manufacturing in. The second thing, we need a focus a government approach to get the manufacturing in this country. There is a large opportunity. Manufacturing will lead to the lot of developments, R and Ds, and the huge employment. So what is to be done? The first first thing. we have to create a large barrier to the imports the large barrier will the normally the question will come that it will increase the end of the day price no it, it will not today we have the model manufacturing of almost 10 gigawatt plus and due to the internal competition when the demand is less than 10 gigawatt we are seeing that the price difference between the indian model manufacturers and chinese model manufacturers is not much so if we can create a large barrier of the import duties and allow the indian manufacturers and other manufacturers even the chinese manufacturers comes and they set up the production in india i think that the internal competition of the indian manufacturers what they have done today or what we have done in a module side it will happen tomorrow in a cells wafer and other things together so i think a large investment is needs to be attracted and fortunately today the more focus is on the project development and the price of the power than the bringing a core manufacturing in this country so we have been uh, talking about this for almost now 10 years i came into the solar in 2008 so probably 12 years now so 12 years we are talking about india has to do it and when it comes to the manufacturing i see the batteries also the same discussion what i am seeing in a solar for 12 years is going on a similar discussion is going on in the batteries i think we all need to work together and see that we do not miss the bus what we miss in the batteries what we miss in the solar in 2008 to 2011 uh, we should not repeat that here so all we need to talk here for this country employment also the de risking of the whole world as a alternate supply source uh, to the other countries and hopefully sir been in isa if the world isa headquarter is india i think india should be at least top 3 or top 5 in the export of the solar and the batteries so that also i would like to request on this platform that we all should work in that direction to bring the manufacturing in india it's in my opinion it's very simple just to put a large barriers give the visibility of the market to the investors and give the visibility of the proper at least return on their investment any manufacturing company would like to have the at least horizon of 7 to 8 years to pay back their debt and to run that unit so clear visibility of 7 to 8 years will bring it 
we at wari we see this a good opportunity in the country uh, we are of course growing from 2 gigawatt to the 4 gigawatt our manufacturing post covid immediately uh, all the machines and equipments are coming in india and uh, they will get deployed probably in a 6 to 8 months we should be working in that line so bringing a manufacturing in india we are absolutely optimistic and we think this will happen someday anyway thank you very much for giving this opportunity and thank you to the entire team thanks sir thank you sir keep 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 shining sir you are the trail blazer and uh, in fact visionary and inspiration to all the manufacturing units in india may you become the largest in the world and let let the indian company be the largest manufacturer in the world of uh, uh, whether it is batteries or uh, whether it is pv or cells so uh, uh, and this is very important so uh, in this uh, connection us, one more like important to, thing i would like to add one thing yes so actually we have yes. we have dream team no in india we have <laughs> rana rashi you and soon absolutely uh, and also mr poppy because we have some agreements no <laughs> <laughs> absolutely thomas and thank you for uh, to you for organizing this wonderful uh, you know discussion it will take a long way uh, helping india and helping the world also in climate change and energy poverty both the both the aspects and you so, know uh, the discussion is great but the most important is action yes <laughs> yes 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 absolutely absolutely in in our salute to work is most important so our uh, traditional text says work is the most important thing so our uh, book uh, bhagavad gita the concept is work is worship actually so with this uh, uh, we have always uh, had uh, mr pranav ji has always supported right to energy movement for day one actually he was the one who conceptualized it in a great sense he was the one who supported our right to energy uh, movement from day one keeping and he always used to tell that if 1.2 billion people are living without electricity it is shame on all of us actually and lot of these people are in india so pranav mehta ji is presently chairperson of ncp national solar energy federation of india i think it is the most powerful federation in solar sector in india he is also director of uh, global solar council but uh, uh, the best part is he is solar visionary influencer disruptor and the best thing is he is the best human person so if you have any challenge in any areas whether it is uh, you know funding whether it is in manufacturing whether you can approach him and he is approachable so uh, uh, pranav ji i would like i would like to uh, you know because you are closely connected with the industry and you are uh, constantly speaking to the industry can you share your thoughts that as to what are the practical difficulties due to covid situation which renewable energy sector is uh, you know facing and one more thing i want to mention that uh, he is truly the you know father of solar revolution uh, in india so when uh, we were young kids he was thinking about solar so that's wonderful please go ahead please go ahead sir thank you very much uh, raj ji for the uh, kind words uh, i am glad to join this great event together we are stronger and along with all my fantastic uh, colleagues uh, with whom i have worked over the years uh, mr k s popley gyani chianeta when we work for global solar council we are founders of the global solar council uh, which was formed at paris during the climate talks uh, of course thomas uh, we have been working together uh, hitesh uh, doshi ji uh, dr rashi gupta uh, as also mr reji pillai and of course mr raj singh niranjan uh, and uh, vaishali ji uh, uh, especially renew power with suman sinha ji also we have been working together uh, as uh, most of you know i started my solar journey when india was at zero megawatt in 2006 that is at least two years uh, before mr hitesh doshi started so from there to 35000 megawatts 35 gigawatts india top 5 in the world so whatever i am going to say will be in view of the experience gained uh, over that journey so covid and post covid what i see is that it is amrit manthan going on what we say in the indian culture mm -hmm. that a great 
churning uh, is happening and it has happened over a period of time and uh, we have learned and something really good uh, is coming out a new order is coming out if we look globally large scale energy transition uh, is taking place rapidly and india is very much a part of it and playing uh, its role if we really see as tony shiva mentioned yesterday all costs are going down solar storage wind and also electric vehicles so it will change the entire scenario in the years to come so we see the role of solar and as uh, i think mr popli ji mentioned that up to 2030 when we are as india going from 23% renewable energy at present to 40% by 2030 that is okay but after 2030 to 2050 is the most uh, uh, difficult and uh, at the same time uh, very uh, challenging period that uh, we will uh, have when we are moving towards 100% renewable energy as mr hansfell and others have been saying and in that india will play a big role in that 100% renewable energy it is predicted that 69% will come from solar 15% from wind and balance from the rest of it most important thing underlying principles that we have to understand is that solar energy has a vast potential for poverty alleviation this right to energy is greatly linked to that so poverty alleviation uh, uh, you know is also linked to the uh, sustainable development goals uh, where hunger uh, food everything is very much there so we have that very important role to play and india will surely play that role and in order to move in that direction solar energy must move from class to mass so that rooftop that is important has again to be underlined and uh, mr tony siva in a very interesting lecture he also mentioned as the costs are going down when the solar cost goes down below the transmission cost at that time solar energy will uh, have done its job really rooftop that means that you are generating your own electricity so that electricity act 2003 which is now being amended right to energy etc is greatly uh, answered by rooftop at the same time what we see in future as a black box like a refrigerator in our house supplying all the energy needs cooking uh, and uh, uh, you know air conditioning or whatever you need so in that direction uh, we are moving and solar we are moving from gigawatt to terawatt we never imagine at the time of paris talk that in just 4 years from now we will be tripling solar capacity at that time world was at 200 gigawatts and today uh, we are at 633 gigawatts moving towards terawatts now answering this very important immediate problems that people are facing uh, 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 how we restart after covid where actual problems people are facing are related mostly to the logistics all the supposing a manufacturer uh, his uh, uh, inputs are lying at uh, navasheva or any other port and from there to his manufacturing plant if uh, the material is to be brought difficult to get permissions uh, for transport how uh, interstate intrastate uh, all kinds of logistics problems will be there getting the laborers uh, uh, you know employees back to work uh, is also quite a ch challenge but i am sure that uh, uh, eventually all this uh, we will be able to overcome and uh, india will uh, play a very leading role as the world is moving uh, towards renewable energy and meeting uh, the climate change uh, uh, you know mitigating the effects of global warming and climate change
and through partnerships we always say we have great partnership global solar council and international solar alliance we have great partnership with irina as uh, gyani uh, already mentioned and similarly with all the organizations including gopal energy uh, foundation that uh, we as national solar energy federation also will be playing our role uh, so uh, with that i think uh, i will end so that others also get a chance that's super sir that's super and uh, this will solve the uh, twin challenges solar has a potential of uh, uh, solving both the challenges if 3.2 billion people across the world do not have access to clean fuel to cook food solarization is the answer new technological development is required and if 1.2 people billion people across the world do not have access to uh, electricity solarization is the answer sir i agree uh, fully agree with you uh, shri pranav ji and it is important because india is a huge market it is important that we understand what kind of market opportunities it provides and i would request mr vipul gulati who is the coo of first view india to share his market report and introduce the market to us about uh, uh, india and uh, uh, let me tell you in 10 years i have seen this media house growing uh, leaps and bounds and doing wonderfully wonderful work not only in india across the world so all the all the conferences wherever i go whether it is uh, you know china shanghai a snack whether it is intersolar i everywhere we find active people from solar quarter and uh, it is under leadership of vipul gulati please go ahead mr vipul gulati thank you thank you raj for the introduction uh, good afternoon all the esteemed panelists i think it's my uh, humble pleasure to uh, be here with all of you so i assume that uh, we uh, have uh, a time constraint so i'll be as uh, crisp as possible in the ppt i just uh, yeah i'm just uploading yes my yes vipul vipul ji we have to share our thoughts in 4 minutes because time is pressing thank you so much thank you so much But as Vipul is so 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 great speaker, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. He's attending already second session, so. <laughs> I, I hope you can see my uh, PPT. Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. All right. So I think I'll be talking on uh, keeping the momentum of clean energy in India. This is just a brief about us. So we are uh, Asia is one of the biggest clean tech media firm. We have. Uh, operations in uh, in APAC middle east region sark region we organize close to 500 meets certified trainings etc etc all right now i i'll move on to first of all what has been uh, i think our panelists have already spoken i'll just give it a bit more a pointed structure approach to each one of them uh firstly i think uh, we have seen uh, a demand hit during this lockdown period especially on the cni segment Uh, whereas we have seen an increase in the domestic segment the total uh, demand if you look at it we've seen it just in the first week with seven days we've seen an, a negative of 26 percent coming in in the uh, first week of lockdown however this will be increasing forward and in terms of uh, i think the price impact we've definitely seen uh, a lot of reduction in coal demand especially because of uh, the global warming the larger picture of global warming we have as such not seen really uh, any A significant impact on on the long term PPAs which have been signed. Uh, our utility finances, I think, in this time have been uh, tremendously affected. A lot of discoms uh, have not been in a good financial position right now uh, to cope up with this. However, I think uh, when I move on to the next slide, there have been some very positive measures which have been taken by MNRI to do this. Uh, in terms of uh, the investment and capex, I think uh, there is a, a slight delay in the project construction, especially for the plants which have not been commissioned. However, I think in my interaction with a lot of uh, major developers, uh, Ms. Nigam is here, but I think a lot of other developers, including Renew, all the plants are operational in solar, wind, etc. Uh, I am also including the electric vehicle in this segment. so we are seeing a rapid uh, we are not seeing a rapid we are seeing a regular flow of projects as per timelines in each of this now there are five major points uh, which define the market outlook for re sector the first one definitely is uh, as of now we have to safeguard all our critical functions which means we have to realign our businesses uh, we have to move on to a digital platform the second one that we have to look at is a, is a very of uh, stronger business continuity planning which starts from a stronger supply chain as toshi ji mentioned about the uh, 
localized procuring and domestic manufacturing. I think that's definitely one thing which we need. We need a lot of asset optimization strategy. We need asset sweating to happen, uh, which can only happen if we have more and more of uh, uh, partnerships taking place, more and more of mergers and acquisitions to increase the returns every of every particular asset. So that's as far as the business continuity goes. Uh, pooling of resources, I think this is going to be a, a major challenge, which right now on site uh, we will be looking at, which talks about, first of all, reskilling of workforce. It also talks about putting in a clear guideline for the workforce. Um, as you all know, I think uh, WHO has recently released a report saying that this will be a long way through uh, Corona, which may not leave us, which definitely means that there has to be a proper guideline as all the skilled workforce will be living and operating, all the projects will be executed, keeping in mind that Corona still exists around us, which means safety has to be number one priority for pooling of resources. When you move on to financial stress, I think definitely uh, uh, we have the former uh, CMB of Freda, but I, I think he, I'm sure he understands the, as of now, importance of uh, the low cost funding, which is required. Uh, we need a lot of uh, uh, money to be raised by green bonds, which we've already raised uh, uh, in the last uh, two or three weeks. And the last one, I think from the government side, we need a quick recovery from where we currently stand. Uh, we need some priority sector lending. We need to uh, have a tariff ceiling from bidding to increase the returns. So that's the current outlook. Uh, on what has happened so far, I think we've definitely... Uh, seen some improvements, some relief coming in from the government. Primarily, I think the first thing which has been done is the central government has allowed about 22, 28 states to borrow up to 3.5 crore from the open market. That's definitely one good addition that we've seen. We've also seen an online email based invoicing which has been put into place immediately during these times. As far as the finance is concerned, I think we've uh, seen a, an extension of three months on repayment. We've raised US $100 million from green bonds already. And as when we move on to projects, you will realize that the government has already classified uh, as essential services, a forced measure has been put across for under construction projects. So these are good signs as to how in the short term, the government is trying to make sure that uh, projects and businesses continue to run. In my next slide, I'd like to highlight on some of the areas where we as a panel, we represent each of us a different stakeholder community within the industry, some from the manufacturing, some from the financing. I think there's one definitely uh, a plan of action that needs to be put across to government to uh, implement the Make in India manufacturing scheme. I'm sure this is something which the government is also evaluating. One of the recent quotes from MNRE secretary has also given additional push to the a scheme of make in India. We need to see a cross-sectoral approach at all levels within the government, within the industry to create more think tanks and take in from success factors of the others. We have to look at every state to deliver a more structured approach in building up their capacity. And absolutely the last one is we need to have more partnerships in place to reduce individual cost overheads and increase the asset sweating. So I think with this, I am pretty much on time uh, in terms of this. And I, I, I think I, I did run so quickly on a couple of slides, but I would <laughs> definitely like to uh, put across uh, some points, so my personal point of view, which I think here is, I think we will be living in times where Corona exists in our daily lives. And it not only affects uh, us, it affects the aviation sector, the airline, vendors, mining, all the industries together. I. I think Corona has right now given this is a wake up call for each one of us right now. It has showed us the importance uh, of cleaner environment. It has given us a lot of uh, needed push to electrify an economy. So I think this impact is short lived. It is not going to be a permanent blow for the sector. We will soon overcome this. I think it will also add to our personal commitment now to go green. And I think that is exactly what we needed in this sector. It has also made a lot of geopolitical change within our industry. I think uh, if you read of the recent news which was put across, uh, we had a fine which was put by the German government on China uh, for approximately US uh, 180 billion uh, dollars for the damages of coronavirus. 
I think that has significantly worn out uh, the future. And if this is to be taken very seriously, I think it is more than essential. It is the last resort for every nation to build its own supply chain. Because if something happens in, on international borders, I think we'll be the first ones to be affected. So I think with that, uh, I'll rest my uh, presentation. And I hope I'm done. What wonderful, wonderful presentation, uh, Vipul ji. It was spot on. It was uh, terrific, actually. And uh, but yes, I also noticed one thing that uh, one uh, one uh, step government has, as you have rightly pointed out, government is proactive this time and it is taking quick decisions. Firstly, extension of ALMM requirement, approved list of module manufacturers. So we, as a firm, our firm, Trans India Law Associate, filed. Uh, approved list of my module manufacturer licenses for a lot of companies and thankfully it has been extended from April to September. And uh, yes. if you uh, see, uh, if there is a recession in 2020, I think we can rebound it. And for rebounding it, we in India especially, we have Solar World Congress. And uh, with Solar World Congress coming in uh, October 2021, uh, uh, and with combined with uh, TILA International Conflicts on Energy, and we have also requested International Solar Alliance to hold its assembly uh, over there. That will be a terrific combination where uh, we, the industry can grow many folds uh, together. So, uh, uh, Vipulji, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. There is another uh, aspect where I would like uh, uh, Mr. Reji Kumar Pillai to get involved. Recently, Government of uh, India, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has also uh, released the draft uh, Electricity Amendment Act uh, 2020, which is landmark in itself. And uh, one of the most important aspects, uh, which uh, even uh, Hitesh Ji was uh, saying that uh, recovery of dues from especially DISCOMs is to be on time-bound manner so that uh, all the entities are solvent in uh, energy sector and uh, they thrive. And for recovery of these uh, uh, dues, the government has introduced a uh, setup uh, new recovery mechanism wherein an institutional a civil court uh, has been set up which will uh, in time bound manner recover uh, dues uh, from uh, the uh, discom or any other entity who has uh, dues to be paid so uh, mr reji uh, uh, has been uh, instrumental he is president of uh, indian smart grid forum and he is also chairman of uh, global uh, smart grid forum and he uh, has always supported and uh, worked for right to electricity movement. So he thinks his view, I appreciate and I support his views uh, to uh, end to end, that right to electricity should become uh, one of the statutory rights or constitutional right in all the states uh, of India. Uh, with this, uh, Mr. Reji Kumar Pillai, I would request you to share your thoughts that uh, how this smart energy movement for next 10 years will play out and uh, what will be the future of uh, the renewable energy sector or the smart grid sector after the COVID. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening yeah, to all the panelists and viewers who are from around the world. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join this August forum. It's my, I'm delighted to be here and presenting my views uh, as uh, short as possible. The electricity amendment uh, bill is introduced by Ministry of Power, not MNRE, but I mean, they work very closely with the MNRE. I stand, Some of the I stand provisions corrected. in that, uh, yeah, yeah. Some of the provisions in that are more India specific, so won't get into the details. We are still studying it. Uh, we have time till end of next week to submit our comments. So it is put up on the open platform in the ministry website with comments from all stakeholders. So coming to the growth of solar and other renewable energy in India in last 10-15 uh, years, we have made tremendous progress, particularly last five years been tremendous in terms of uh, solar. So, uh, out of our current program of 100 gigawatt of solar by 2022, many seg segments have done pretty well, except the rooftop seg segment, which is 40 gigawatt. We have not even achieved 4 gigawatt out of that. One of the main reasons why that sector is not uh, uh, growing is because of the one, uh, we have net metering policies in all the states. It was issued between 2013 and 2016. All state and union territories have net metering policies promoting uh, 
uh, rooftop solar, but it has not taken off mainly because distribution companies, distri distribution utilities, we are not supporting it uh, in most part of the country. And also people don't know the advantages of it. So uh, we have been advocating of late that MNRE need not give any subsidy to rooftop buyers, those who installed rooftop, uh, they don't need to be given subsidy, rather subsidy should be given to the discom for integration of the rooftop into so low voltage and medium voltage grid. That's an area where very little work has been done. Uh, we have prepared an energy storage roadmap for India. Uh, India Smart Grid Forum and support from uh, other stakeholders work closely with CEA, MNRE and MOP and uh, India Energy Storage Alliance also supported us. So we estimated about 10 gigawatt hour of energy storage to be connected to the low voltage and uh, medium voltage uh, network in India by 2022 if we have to have this 40 gigawatt target to be met. So we, this roadmap we prepared is up to 2032 and for the grid support alone we have calculated something like uh, uh, 100 and uh, more than 200 gigawatt hour of energy storage and as uh, the beginning Populi Sahib had told, Populi Sahib had told battery prices will come down. Today we are talking about uh, at cell level 100 uh, uh, dollar per kilowatt hour. We expect that to be uh, below 50 uh, by 2025 and this, this will lead a major revolution. Another reason why uh, I, often I get phone call from people asking which panel to buy, from where to buy, who will install on my rooftop. So I, we have been advocating uh, that it should be available as a commodity like any other electrical appliance. I go to a neighborhood store to buy an air conditioner or a washing machine. In such shop, the solar panel and inverter should be available and they should send the tested certified technician to home to get it installed. So that is what we have recently in a paper in March we have published. Several other recommendations also we have given. And, and on the distribution utility side, one of the major uh, difficulty we have seen is that they think rooftop as a, a loss of revenue. So some of the places, the net metering policy, they have amended also. Three, four states have already amended, which is not very supportive of, of, for the growth of rooftop solar. So uh, we have been discussing with one of such states and we have made them agree for a peer-to-peer -peer trading using blockchain technology and we are about to uh, install those as a pilot project in the state of Uttar Pradesh in Lucknow uh, <clears throat> before this lockdown. The moment lockdown is removed, uh, we will the pilot project will be uh, operational. So the scoms will not lose revenue at the same time those who want to buy green energy can buy green energy on this blockchain platform and after the pilot it will be scaled up across the country. Another point which uh, some of the speakers talked about is about the RE integration. On the 5th of April, I must say that 5th of April, we have been able to do a 30% total load in 15 minutes time. So which means that the grid is flexible. We have a flexible grid already and that too with uh, our current uh, renewable energy monitoring centers which have been uh, in, uh, commissioned in some of the region others will be commissioned in later part of the year that will again help us for integration of uh, large solar and wind farms onto the uh, transmission medium uh, transmission grid high voltage grid and digital technologies will help in uh, balancing the load even at the low voltage side electric vehicle which will be connected to the low voltage grid and same as the rooftop solar, which will be connected to the low voltage distribution grid. Both could. We have again another major uh, uh, policy side we have been working with the uh, uh, all stakeholders is that the electric vehicles, which will be the car, particularly the cars which will be uh, sold in India, should have the vehicle to grid capability. The electric vehicle charging infrastructure standard, which we are formulating along with the big committee constituted by Bureau of Indian Standards. We are making this point very clear. So it's a low voltage grid where people plug in their car for several hours and uh, it can be programmed for shallow charge and discharge of the car battery. So the solar electricity which is generated can be stored on the car batteries and, and whenever there is a, a demand supply imbalance on the grid, the batteries can immediately pump in the, the energy back to the grid to stabilize the grid. So these are some of the things which we see 
as a major uh, advantage uh, I mean, in the coming days, which is going to happen. Uh, the, what COVID has done, COVID has, this platform which we are using today, the digital platform, it has become an imperative uh, in the day-to-day -day life. Uh, uh, children are doing their school homework and their class, uh, they are attending using Zoom and other digital platforms. We have been advocating on digitalization in electric utilities. Some of them have done private ones in India have been on the forefront of digitalization. They are being able to uh, issue bills and collect payments. Uh, the state-owned ones have not been able to do so much. Uh, but with COVID, we believe that digitalization will uh, take speed in utilities also. And in the last one month, what we have seen, the environmental damage which we thought is irreversible, that has been proven wrong. In two weeks, we could see the air quality improving, the water quality improving. It is reversible and there will be positive ways to do that. Thank you very much. I will stop here. Super. Brilliant. Brilliant, Mr. Reggie. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, very informative and uh, useful to all of us uh, to hear the new developments in uh, uh, grid management and uh, Obviously, smart grid and India is becoming smarter uh, with the grid management and integrating especially renewable energy into the existing grid. So, uh, I would like to, in this case, I would also like to introduce Ms. Vaishali Nigam Sinha, uh, who is Chief Sustainability and CSR and Communication Officer of Renew Power. Uh, she is the alumni of Harvard and Columbia University. That's impressive. And uh, uh, needless to mention that Renew Power is the India's largest renewable energy IP, IPP. Keeping in view the fact that uh, somebody has proposed an international grid running from equator to equator. And uh, if the earth is, uh, you know, uh, one, then the people who are getting sun can, uh, you know, transmit electricity to the part where there is no light and then reverse can happen. So there, I think for renewable energy, it's a very huge opportunity. So, uh, 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 Vaishali ji, my, uh, you know, uh, uh, question or we would like to uh, hear you about uh, energy transition due to renewable and especially after the COVID. And also, we would also like to know is what is the role of women leadership in uh, clean tech? So especially we have, you know, two women leaders there, uh, Rashi Gupta, Dr. Rashi Gupta is also there and you or yourself is there. So what do you think? What are your thoughts and how women leadership will transform the renewable energy sector in the next 10 years? Please go ahead. The mic, mic. Yes. Your mic is not, please. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, congratulations on organizing this uh, webinar. Uh, it's a great idea. I think we're learning to interact with each other innovatively. I think, uh, you know, human beings are social um, animals. And so whatever happens, we will stay connected and we will stay resilient. I think that's one thing COVID has taught us. So, um, uh, you know, it's strange times. First of all, you know, I, I wanted to uh, express my, uh, you know, amazement and pride for all the people who are actually working in the front lines, you know, trying to save lives at the cost of their lives. So just a moment to, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, you know, call out, um, you know, to them for and be grateful for all the work they are doing in very difficult situations. Uh, I think we tend to have a tendency of uh, complaining, um, you know, when we are quite a privileged lot, uh, you know, sitting in very safe uh, environments uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot happening in the world. And I think we'll all uh, come out learning a lot, um, uh, you know, and uh, being grateful for a lot uh, after COVID-19 uh, is, uh, is history, which I hope happens soon. Uh, you know, we would have learned how to be more uh, flexible in terms of how we do business. Um, you know, we would have learned how to, uh, you know, work remotely. We would have learned how to, um, you know, look at our own resources and limited resources and uh, decrease dependency on, uh, you know, uh, singular economies like, you know, for sourcing, etc as the world was on uh, uh, China. So I think there's going to be a lot of learnings. Uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of value, I think. I think it's God's way of telling all of us that we really need to step back and take it easy and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, kind of uh, become one with nature and uh, live in a more harmonious uh, manner. 
So my view is that there's a lot of uh, positivity um, uh, which we should uh, focus on and uh, a lot of business learnings as well. Um, you know, uh, let me talk a little bit about energy transition of uh, renewables and, uh, you know, uh, what it means to sustain the renewable energy sector. Um, you know, I think we in India are um, really blessed. Uh, we are uh, a part, uh, uh, you know, we have a government uh, which is very supportive uh, and uh, which is extremely important for uh, the energy transition to take place. So for a country like India, which is actually the home, uh, is home to one sixth of the world's population, uh, and uh, but the energy consumption is quite meager. Uh, you know, we've installed uh, close to 370, 69, 70 gigawatts of uh, capacity and uh, generating roughly 1.5 trillion units annually, implying a per capita consumption of around 1,200 units. I dare to put these numbers out there in front of experts, uh, but, uh, um, you know, this is what, um, you know, these are some of the numbers which kind of resonate when I think of uh, India and energy transition. Um, you know, this is about one third of uh, the global uh, average and around a fourth of China and a 13th of US. So as India sees rapid economic growth and transforms, um, you know, I think there is going to be, um, you know, uh, going forward, there's going to be a lot of uh, growing urbanization, ri rising incomes, uh, and population increase. And uh, this is also going to spur, uh, you know, consumer demand and electricity. And uh, studies suggest that India's share of total global primary energy demand is set to roughly double to 11% by 2040. So India will need to double its electricity output by 2030 to meet this massive rise which we are seeing. And uh, you know, some of you have also brought this out. Uh, while honoring our commitment to reduce our carbon footprint, which is critical, very important, by about 35% from the uh, 2005 levels, this, this would require roughly half the additional output to come from renewables, which translates to adding uh, about 25 gigawatts annually to 2030. Now, these are all pretty significant numbers. And I just want to bring to the table that as all of us know, that to you know meet these targets and to come up with these numbers, none of this can be done without the commitment of the government and various other stakeholders, policymakers, you know, companies like us, manufacturing companies, uh, you know, think tanks, you know, uh, you know, and, 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 and thought leadership forums, uh, so that we are all in sync uh, to deliver this uh, these humongous numbers. Uh, so, I mean, there's clearly a need for energy uh, for us to think about this and commit to this. Uh, I know I have limited time. Uh, I just wanted to bring, you know, after a lot of this uh, discussion, I, you know, which has happened, one thing which I haven't seen come up is, of course, uh, the critical role uh, women can play in this journey, which we are uh, undertaking. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, from where I sit, uh, I have seen that uh, inclusion of women in the clean tech sector has been quite limited. And, um, uh, you know, it's, 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 um, and if I could just segue into COVID, you know, unfortunately, it's taken a lot of effort for women to get into a business, you know, to, to, to kind of uh, find their voice there. And unfortunately, out of COVID, I've been talking to a lot of women around the world, actually, and it's just, uh, you know, very sad to see that the number of uh, women who are going to be victims as far as professional impact is concerned is, uh, is pretty high. And uh, I think, I'd, uh, you know, it's something which I personally feel I want to commit myself to, to help more women to, you know, get back into business uh, because, you know, whether it's hospitality, whether it's airlines, various other sectors, I think women have... Uh, uh, suffered uh, over the last few months. Um, you know, I think we need more women in the clean tech sector. There is no doubt about that. And this starts from uh, early days uh, when women are in school. I think so more women in uh, STEM. I think we need more commitment by universities and educational institutions. You know, I was at my alma mater at Columbia recently, and they're setting up a climate uh, institute just focused on um, uh, this subject. They have a separate energy institute. So I think this way more commitment, which we can see here in India, uh, with respect to um, you know setting up uh, specialized institutions, uh, specialized institutions which can churn out, 
I would say professionals and other skilled folks to, um, you know, to work in the sector. Um, I, I think women uh, do a great job uh, uh, with respect to, you know, kind of fitting well in this sector. Um, you know, they make for great leaders. We've seen again, coming back to COVID, uh, some of the women led countries have done a great job uh, in terms of handling this uh, um, crisis uh, much better than uh, men led countries. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, we have not uh, recognized the potential of women, not only to lead, but also to get engaged, uh, whether it is startups, whether it is, uh, you know, getting funding for these startups. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, venture capital firms, etc. should be a little bit more open minded and, uh, you know, encourage women to um, come up with ideas and get funded. We are at Renew are working a lot on engaging women. Uh, so we are currently, you know, I may not be able to share a lot of the details, but in partnership with a technology institution, a leading technology institution in India, and with one of the global organizations to, uh, to come up with, um, you know, startup um, incubator program for women. And uh, we're going to be providing some seed funding, but it has to be women led. It has to relate to the renewable energy sector. So, you know, whether it's storage, whether it's grid, whether it's software around it, anything, but it has to be women led and it has to relate to the sector. I think that these are small ways in, peop um, you know, in which um, people can engage women better because they do make for great entrepreneurs, um, you know, and um, are very committed um, and uh, this sector requires a lot of advocacy as well. And women are great at advocacy. So I guess what I would say is that, uh, you know, I would call out to the various policymakers, you know, uh, people from um, other international locations that we should think about how we can support and engage more women and encourage them to join the clean tech sector. I think skill development is important. And so we should, uh, you know, basically ensure that more women are being skilled in the sector. Um, I think there should be more mentorship by men and women, um, you know, as role models for women so that they can get encouraged to, you know, join the sector. There's a little bit of a mindset uh, uh, barrier which exists because, you know, a lot of women see the renewable space um, as an infra, uh, uh, you know, sector which kind of builds a barrier of being in, you know, remote locations, etc. But there's so much more in the sector where women can contribute very comfortably. So we should all, um, you know, work towards engaging them better. As I said, financing is extremely important. And, uh, you know, rewards recognition, let's recognize women who are making a difference in the sector. I don't think they're doing enough of that. And um, yeah, so let's make it easier for women to succeed in the sector. Um, I have highlighted some of the ways uh, in which this can be done. Um, you know, I'd like to conclude by saying that, you know, we're going to be living in a very different world, which would require a lot of empathy and a lot of uh, flexibility and, um, you know, new learning. So, you know, let's all keep an open mind and, um, you know, all the best to cope with uh, the next few months. My personal view is this is just the calm before the storm, because once uh, we start gradually kind of releasing the lockdown uh, mode and protocols, um, you know, there are going to be a lot of challenges, especially in a country like India. Net-net, um, if I could conclude by saying that whatever the changes are, I think whether we use broadband, we're going to be heavily reliant on technology over the next few uh, months. I think renewables um, is going to be at the center of a lot of these things. And so to the extent we can make a shift to greater use of renewables, um, I think it'll be uh, better for us and the next generation as well. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Vaishali, I would like to make uh, just two comments. So first, I think that uh, with our club and with Rashi, we proved that uh, women can really play the leading role. And uh, I always know if I give, if uh, Rashi has some tasks, it's always done perfectly, yes? <laughs> so this is the Fantastic. Proof. Fantastic. Second thing, I think uh, this is very important because uh, during this event, uh, we make awareness um, around the world amongst especially our leaders that we should stop using the word transition, you know, because actually we will not live in the transition, but we will live in the world transformation. And this is very important, yes, because very often uh, people, they are misleading what will happen, yes, because transition is like, you know, we transit step by step by step by step, yes. And actually here during the next decade, 
will really transform everything, yes? And uh, uh, especially when you are speaking with uh, decision makers, with politicians, it's very important that they also implement in their heads uh, that it's not transition, yes? Because transition is, you know, you can wait, you can make it slowly and stuff and transformation. And yesterday, with all the visionaries, they say, no, 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 tra transformation, transformation, sorry, we don't use this, uh, this word. That's just chicken confusion, yes? <laughs> yeah, just like we don't have to use the word climate change, we have to use the word climate emergency now, right? It's like, no, no more gradual steps. We just have climate to go. But that, uh, uh, Vaishali, it would be amazing if you can uh, continue with uh, Rashi, yes? Because you would like to have you in our club, in the Empowering Women Initiative. We to, you see, uh, I always uh, repeat, if we have, we are like uh, uniting DNAs, yes? And every asset additional to our uh, joint DNA, it uh, makes our DNA stronger, yes? Sure, it'll be a pleasure. Thank you, Tomas. So we have That's last uh, 10 minutes and maybe uh, five minutes, let's say I will ask other session uh, to wait, yes? I, I just, absolutely. Uh, Raji, I'd just like to step in and, uh, you know, just yes. build on what uh, Vaishali said. I think we at Cholo Cordo, we are releasing uh, next month uh, a very special list, uh, which is highlighted toward Asia's most powerful women. And this list is going to be released for the entire Asia sector. We're working clean at the sector. I think uh, Rashi has already made it to the list. Uh, I'm just putting a teaser out. But I think we are dedicated uh, on this front. Uh, you know, we go by the saying that if you, if you educate a man, you make him smarter. But if you educate a woman, you make an entire generation smarter. So I think that is exactly what we need in the RE sector is we focus on, on recognizing what Vaishali, I think you mentioned. And this list is being released in a partnership with the World Bank. I think Amit is also here who can further highlight. And the MNRE secretary and the minister will be unveiling this list during a virtually held event of FIRES, which is Women in Renewable Energy and Sustainability. So I think we as a company are absolutely committed in highlighting, recognizing, and doing our best. And we'll be happy to do as much as possible on this. Great Vipulji, job. Yes. Vipulji, we, uh, you have to, uh, you know, for your list, we have two uh, members in the room. So you can please include Vaishali ji and, uh, you know, Dr. Rashi. So, Ma'am, ma'am uh, is, Raj, one minute, hold on. Ma'am is already included in the list. Without her, the list is incomplete. No <laughs> way we can leave her out of the list. There's no pressure here, please. This is not okay. Only, you know, please. No, use without you, it's incomplete. No way. I cannot take it. Without you, it's incomplete. Thomas, that energy, energy transformation was a wonderful thing and uh, well said. And climate emergency, uh, Vaishali ji, that's uh, super. And your thoughts were brilliant and spot on and the most useful to this sector. And I fully agree that women leadership has to get involved to make this possible, make renewable energy possible, make right to energy possible remove the curse of energy poverty from the world. And the uh, most impacted person in the world in this energy poverty situation is women, actually. So what our foundation has done, Dr. Gopal Energy Foundation, keeping in view that 3.2 billion people across the world do not have access to clean fuel to cook food. Mothers cook food in a smoky environment and they don't suffer alone. The child of one day to 10 years also suffer with them. The World Bank says that, Amit ji will correct me, says 5 million people every year die because of this problem. Such a massive challenge it is that. So what our foundation did is we had a MOU signed with Banasthali Vidyapit University, which is the largest residential university for women. And we have started for last three years organizing this competition called TILA International Moot Court Competition on Energy and International Law. It is only open for lady law students from across the world. So that lady law students from across the world can uh, arrive at Jaipur have a competition, win away the prizes and take this uh, movement of right to energy and renewable energy to their respective countries across the world and become future leaders. So all, all, all the guests and the panelists, I would like to invite them in October. We are having third. Hopefully COVID will, you know, uh, uh, be contained at that time. So with this and uh, rightly, all of you have mentioned that World Bank has a very important role to play. And fortunately, we have Mr. Amit Jain from World Bank. He has not worked only in World Bank. He has worked in IRINA. He has worked in ADB. He has worked in Clinton Foundation. He has, uh, and, and, and I like one thing because I am the author and I know how much time and effort it takes to, uh, you know, build a book. And he has written two books on climate change policy and uh, 
second book for waste to energy so i uh, request uh, amit ji to uh, share his thoughts as to what will be the future of uh, uh, renewable energy sector and uh, for next 10 years and uh, uh, please go ahead amit ji thank you raj thank you thomas first of all very interesting panel we have developers policy makers manufacturers financiers all on the same panel so uh, great job thomas and raj i will uh, start from where ms vishali nigam and vipul mentioned the role of women in renewable energy so uh, the world bank is partnering with mnre and um, we are launching a initiative called re women on 20th of may where we are inviting not only the women leaders in india but all across the globe to share their experiences in three specific fields one is entrepreneurship again ms vishali nigam um, is uh, taking lead in that front uh, second uh, on the financing part uh, and thirdly how women can lead in the role of capacity building and awareness so it will be a mega event it will be a virtual event a precursor to re invest which are, has also been now announced as a virtual event uh, and this initiative will start on 20th of may but it will call it will culminate with re invest now let's move on to the financing aspect now um, all the esteemed panelists have given uh, a very good picture of renewable energy but let me first tell you that these are difficult times for all of us and these are much more difficult times for renewable energy investor in india is asking three questions now will i get paid of my pps if yes when will i get paid and thirdly do i have any more new projects coming in india where i can have more pipeline coming up now this is very peculiar to covid situation we have seen what has happened in andhra pradesh what has happened in tamil nadu in terms of delay in payment of ppas with demand going down as gopal was mentioning 25% there are serious questions on being asked if, if there will be a negotiation of ppas or the pps could be terminated altogether now it's very easy to say as we will mention the demand has fallen by 25% but raj this 25% demand has mostly gone from commercial and industrial sector it is this sector which is the cash cows for discoms the residential sector and the agriculture sector is cross subsidized as you know and discom is losing as high as 300 crores every day of revenues because of covid situation so this is not going to be a easy business for discoms to pay for the existing ppas and the ppas which are coming forward in the current year and new year as we know there are about 74 gigawatts of solar and wind operating and almost 40 gigawatts of renewable is in the pipeline under which 10 to 11 gigawatt is under advanced construction either in rajasthan or in other countries or in other states so they, these are the questions which developers and financiers are asking in this uh, situation where the cash flows and the revenue of discoms are being hit how are they get, going to get paid uh, we also know that discoms now owe about 12 billion dollars of ppa payments in 13 states to different developers uh, including renew power you know so there's going to be a supply disruption of raw materials we know that in in quarter 1 china was hit and manufacturing was stopped now manufacturing has started in china but q2 quarter 2 in india has been hit because of lockdown and monsoons are coming in july and august what i'm trying to say three quarters are now expected to be lost in india because of the covid situation rupee has depreciated by more than 6 to 7% which will lead to lower irrs not only for lenders but also for developers and i agree with other panelists right now it's a time for make in india campaign where manufacturing in india can be scaled up and dependency on other outside players could be reduced secondly the rooftop and the decentralized development can kick off in this scenario where the atnc losses which are as high as 15 to 20% in india can be reduced again as uh, some of you mentioned that several steps have been taken by mnre in this direction first is extension of deadlines must run status of re discoms has been asked to ensure timely payments of ppa and also there has been some 
lower interest rate both by RBI and by SBI to kickstart the liquidity in the market. We know working capital and liquidity is going to be the main problem in the COVID situation. So I really admire the steps taken by both RBI and government of India in injecting the liquidity both for working capital and the short term capital for this long to be paid. Two learnings from this situation, I would say, which we, we must use first, digitization of utilities and digitization of power sector, uh, which includes installation of smart meters and also looking at other reforms within the DISCOM which could be given. Now, within World Bank, we are doing two things. First of all, under Solar Rooftop, we are creating unified web portal for several DISCOMs in India, where a user can come and install Solar Rooftop through a website. So it is a single stop solution for any CNI or a residential customer to install Solar Rooftop. And we have lent $645 million to SBI to give debt to these players. Secondly, we are also working uh, with MNRE and with other players to create bankable products. If you have seen Reba project where we had three tier guarantee structure, as I mentioned, which can take care of the working capital and liquidity situation. So bankable products like Reva need to be replicated across the country, which can be an answer to the challenges which has been posed by COVID related issues. Um, we have a large technical assistance program uh, under which we are spreading this awareness. As I mentioned, RE Woman is one of the initiative which will be followed by RE Youth and then culminating in RE Invest in partnership with the MNRE. So I, I really uh, look forward to partnership with, uh, with Thomas and Raj in also looking at the ways and means where we could partner together. But these are testing time for all of us. And um, I, I really believe we will come out stronger from these times. Thank you, Raj. So, so thank, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will just put uh, on the, uh, in the link the, uh, the link to our yesterday's uh, amazing session on financial. I think it was one of the most top sessions, financial sessions uh, since a couple of years. So, so really I would recommend to all the people who are interested in what is the future now of the financing of the projects uh, to, to watch it. I will just put a link uh, very soon. And then uh, Raj, we have, uh, let's say five minutes just for the closing. Yes, uh, so uh, Rashi, Rashi has to speak and then uh, we can take one or two questions if the time permits. Uh, Amit Jain, uh, you're spot on. Your facts were super and very, very useful uh, for uh, uh, understanding the sector. And the initiatives which uh, you are taking and the World Bank is taking is, is marvelous. And uh, this is the requirement. But then uh, if if there is a you know mother of battery revolution in India, then she is Rashi Gupta. So Dr. Rashi Gupta has been, you know, trailblazer. She has been uh, inspiration. She has worked for long technology technology and uh, i request uh, dr rashi gupta to share her thoughts as to uh, what will uh, what is uh, her outlook for next uh, you know one decade for india and uh, obviously about the leadership of women uh, for next one day in renewable energy sector thank you so much please go ahead dr rashi thank you for this opportunity i'd just like to uh, sum it up in a few words because of the short time First and foremost, as we all know that the world is in, under renovation. So since the world is under renovation, after renovation, it is all our responsibility to make sure that we keep it neat and clean green. So to do that, I think forefront uh, leadership would be taken up by rooftop with storage. I think that is something which will be uh, very uh, proudly seen and very revolutionizing the entire energy sector. The next decade will see a lot of changes, a lot of uh, positivity and a lot of transformation happening in terms of how um, energy sector will shape up and also that women will be in the core of this transition. Today we have seen a very, uh, today you know there's very less um, and a very few representations happening across the globe and India definitely much lesser. So this would now change. Um, there will be a lot of ease in doing these things now. There will be a lot of positive developments coming up in terms of uh, energy 
transformation i'll not call it any more transition we have seen the transition where on the 5th of april how our grid was really silent and it could move everything uh, i mean everything went smooth so we have seen that transition already so now it's time to transform the earth into a place which is habitable for not only just our generation but even the next coming generation we have to give up some we have to give something to our future generations as well we cannot just have everything for ourselves so their storage will play a very important role that is what i uh, personally feel that um, rooftop plus storage is something which is next going to take decentralization of energy uh, will be very important and we'll see a very significant development and uh, i think uh, even v2g as uh, reggie sir said v2g would also play a very significant role uh, that is vehicle to grid because electric mobility also will take a forefront in uh, coming few years so overall this sector will see a complete transformation in the in a decade and starting i think would be 2021 because by the time we recover and we okay economic reforms would take still longer but i think the path to recovery would be like almost uh, at the end of 2020 so 21 the financial year beginning in 21 will see a lot of positive transition india would become a very big leader into this because we would now be more focusing on make in india and on not just make in india and say even made in india there is slight difference between that so i would like to focus at and say that we will now be also having things which are made in india people have now understood what is the quality uh, that they quality problems that they face they would they want to have more reliable resources in terms of the products that they are purchasing and to have a peace of mind so giving all these uh, situations and uh, circumstances together i think india would also lead and uh, be at the forefront of this energy transformation very shortly and we will see that beginning 2021 thank you rashi that was that was super that was brilliant and you are truly uh, you know mother of storage revolution in india and we would all like that if women leadership you know leads and makes uh, you know largest uh, companies in uh, storage and uh, maybe manufacturing or any other uh, sectors in uh, this so thomas if time permits uh, uh, should we take few questions or we should uh, go with concluding remarks of 20 seconds from each panelist what what is your suggestion i think uh... the problem is that we are we are already speakers waiting in another room okay yes. so, so i i suggest so, that i mean uh, first of all i i would like to say that it's not the final panel that we have yes <laughs> 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 and right. then i think that you see like we are still uh, for the next couple of days so will be closed so i i i suggest that we organize together uh, some follow up yes because we see like uh, always is great to take action and uh, because uh, within our club we will propose uh, the list of actions and then uh, we will also invite all the speakers panelists to take part yes so uh, please don't so, worry today it's not finished yes so it's just the beginning of the transformation yes <laughs> so we will we will have a concluding remark of 10 seconds from all the speakers 10 seconds so uh, one line uh, conclusion if they want to say but then i will uh, i will uh, uh, say uh, spell out two questions also which are important so sandeepan sharma has uh, asked for module manufacturing one requires end to end supply chain for components particularly wafers can the panelists share their thoughts second question which is very important is uh, by abhinav who says that one question to mr reji kumar pillai to throw some more light on the blockchain peer to peer pilot uh, at lucknow up the model tariff and mechanisms to understand more so these questions can be taken online also but every every panelist has 10 second to sum up or conclude uh, give a concluding remark so i would start with honorable shri ks uh, popli ji to give a concluding uh, concluding remarks and uh, please go ahead thank you so well and very interesting panel i must say i must congratulate mr thomas you and all the panelists for doing a wonderful job now i have two things it is very important to have clear policy and regulation so that during the energy transformation as mr thomas said the existing businesses get enough time to transition without losing jobs and without losing the wealth they have created over the years the disruption that the solar is going to create should not be adverse second is to check global warming and to provide access to modern electricity maybe to 600 to 1 billion and you said 3 billion people globally we need to harness rt not as an option 
but as a necessity. No one country can provide the solution. So we are thinking about creating barriers that will not do. We have to, all the countries need to work together because there is no one solution. It's not only one thing that we are going to make in India. We, there is a whole lot of things and we all need to work together, stand as one globe, one word. And let us not, because of this pandemic, start creating barriers. That is my say. Thank you. Thank you so Clear policy and regulation. Super. Pranavji, what do you have to say in 10 seconds? We cannot hear you. Please uh, switch on your uh, uh, unmute. It is a great uh, challenge to restart uh, after the lockdown and uh, let us uh, gear up for that and uh, really work together as uh, Mr. Poplia said and also equally important that there is no one solution and uh, no one country which has to work. All the countries have to work together. All countries, all countries have to work together. That's, that's brilliant. So, uh, uh, Mr. Reji, please share your concluding remarks uh, in 10 seconds. Uh, there was a question about uh, P2P. So this is a regulatory sandbox approach. The regulator has given the permission to uh, experiment this. About 15 to 20 uh, buildings will be part of this pilot program in which different approaches will be uh, implemented based on the experience. Final regulations will be drafted. And regarding the digitalization, which everybody been talking about it, Government of India for the last eight months been planning to launch a new program called the so smart meters for all the customers, 250 million smart meters. It is in the final stages when this lockdown happened. So anytime you will hear Ministry of Power announcing this scheme, and this will be implemented in the next three to four years, that will uh, really be a, 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 a try the digitalization electric utilities in India. Thank you. So power power meters for all. That's that's wonderful. So uh, uh, Vipulji, please smart uh, share. Smart, smart meters, meters, all right. Yes. Smart meters for all. So Vipilji, please 10 seconds, please say your concluding remarks. Sure. So I'll, I'll make sure I'm done 10 seconds. So number one, I think since we are in it together, we need to come out of it together. Second is we need to be very good with our neighbors because if they are bad to us, we all end up in the same zone again. That's point number two. And point number three is we need to be cooperative and take, understand and listen to what the government has to say in each respective regions. I'm sure together we will be coming out of this very soon if we listen to the government. That's it. Wonderful. To love thy neighbor as you love yourself. That's wonderful. So I, I, I request uh, uh, Ms. Vaishali ji to share her concluding remarks. Uh, you're, you're not audible. Uh, you please unmute your mic. Sorry, apologies about that. Just we have to learn to master mute, I think, in this world of uh, <laughs> webinars. Uh, but very quickly, I'd like to say, um, you know, to accelerate energy transformation, Rashi and I are going to get together and set up a battery venture together to actually make all this real. So that's my takeaway. I've got a business partner here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's don't, wonderful. Don't forget to take us shareholder facilitators. <laughs> don't worry so much. You're always with me. And, <laughs> we'll and think about and, it. Rashi, we'll till... think about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is the best experiment. Yeah? They take decision and uh, things are happening. Yeah? No, no, no big talks. Yeah? <laughs> so you will Absolutely. have all our support. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Bat battery women leadership and Tila should be the legal advisor. Okay, so next. <laughs> so then I uh, I request Amit Jain to share uh, concluding remarks. Amit Jain, can you Thanks, hear us? Raj. Please unmute. Yes, huh? only two sentences. <laughs> Development of bankable projects like Reva Solar Park, which can withstand uh, any challenge, including COVID, I would be my takeaway, which can give comfort to lenders and developers to uh, bid for record low prices. So I think those are the bankable projects which could be done much more in India. Yes, question. more. Amit, will, will you finance the project of uh, our two colleagues in the panel? <laughs> 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 done deal. It's, uh, done it's deal. a gentleman's promise. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Mr. Ashi, we are in the game. <laughs>
that's wonderful so i i conclude with uh, mr k s popli has rightly said clear policy and regulation mr pranav mehta has said all countries to work together and uh, mr mr reji kumar is uh, that smart meters for all mr bukul gulati says that love thy neighbors as you love yourself uh, miss vaishali is for battery women leadership to create the largest battery manufacturing unit in india and uh, mr amit is uh, for a more uh, uh, power projects like riva solar park that's wonderful so with this i conclude and hand over to mr thomas thomas you have been very patient you have done wonderful work and thank you for uniting all of us please continue with uh, what you are doing keep shining keep improving keep keep moving forward so all uh, all the mic is with you please go ahead so maybe before i finish rashi also would like to say you see like yes. we, we give so a lot of power to women <laughs> <laughs> yes thomas gives a lot of power to women no doubt about it um uh, one thing that i'd like to share with everyone is that whole of our lives we have been working towards uh, financially securing ourselves but we've never thought of securing ourselves with the energy as well so this is the time now that we secure ourselves with a complete reliable and 100% assured power of uh, assured source of energy that is very important in now at that each one of us has to take a decision for ourselves for our neighbors for our community and for our country that we have a assured 100% power otherwise no digital revolution would work next we would not be able to see each other like this so at least that needs to be assured and done with each one of us that and now over to you thomas thank yes. you so much for giving absolutely first we should have energy revolution and right to energy in every home then we can have digital revolution so that's that's one please go ahead thomas but you know uh, and, and, about all these businesses about revolutions transformations etc about business but uh, you see like in our let's say dna of our club is that uh, it's not b2b it's not b to c but it's to edge to edge human to human you know and i think this is the 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 most important conclusion and you see uh, actually i was the most afraid when the uh, the pan pandemic arrived to the world that uh, we will lose this opportunity of human to human and then i am so happy actually now that uh, through our activities uh, and through even you see this e meetings we can still keep uh, this uh, human to human alive and this is the the biggest uh, Uh, outcome yes of this event and thank you so and, much oh. and when when women decide something nobody can stop them exactly <laughs> no power <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank, thank you everybody and stay safe no, no, stay no, home last thing last thing to to mr oh, thumbs up no no to mr popli that uh, uh, not mr tomas tomas <laughs> and thumbs up for india and for the whole world thank you so much And, and thank Adji for the nice moderation job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank bye you so bye. Much, yeah.